Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I am going to be making strawberry jelly and my refrigerator is not haunted. Paul's playing with it. Whatever, give me two seconds of peace so that I could tell you what I'm doing. So I got all these strawberries on Wednesday. It's now Friday. I want to go ahead and get them processed down. It's about 11.20 now, almost lunchtime, almost nap time. I can do the canning while he's asleep, but what I like to do with my jelly is actually puree it in a blender. I believe I got that trick from my mother-in-law. I think that's what she does with hers, I think. But if you use a potato masher, you can do that too. You'll just get little chunks. Some people like that. I do and don't. I'm just not feeling it this time. So I want to get it all blended in the Vitamix. I picked this up, I think from Walmart. It's a little jar of pectin and on it is a recipe by jar size. Sorry, I have to put you down while I read this and Blippi's blaring in the background so hopefully you can hear me. It says for every eight ounce half pint jar, so I'm gonna be doing just a pint because we go through it so fast. You need the following, one and a third cups of fruit and then lemon juice you can skip. This pectin, one and a half tablespoons and then it's always so much sugar with these things. I have a lot of sugar. One and two thirds cup per little half pint jar. <laughs> in case you're wondering what jelly is, it's sugar with a little fruit in it. That's what you're spreading on your toast or bagels, but it's delicious. So, good. I need to write this out and figure it out. I think what I'm gonna do is I did get, oh, he's getting into the celery, it's fine. I did get some other ones too, but I'm just gonna process all these down and figure out how much this is first, and then I'll reverse figure out how much sugar and pectin I need. That's what I'm gonna do. But what I wanna do is I wanna get these hulled and blended before he goes to sleep. And I do have this little doodad, this little huller, huller, strawberry huller thing. It takes out the strawberry insides. I have a love-hate relationship with this, but we're gonna use this. And I don't even think I'm gonna slice them. Might slice them in half, because the Vitamix will just obliterate them. So let's do that real fast. Step one, process strawberry. <laughs> how pretty that color is oh so pretty and it smells amazing the Vitamix probably did aerate it like I said I'm just gonna put this whole thing in the fridge till I'm ready to use it when Paul's sleeping and hopefully some of those air bubbles will come out if not I think when I stir it on the stove we'll knock some of them out but it is a little bit aerated and I know you can't see it but it's at the six cup line right now aerated so we'll see what this comes down to when it sits in the fridge for a little bit Okay, baby is sleeping for now. I'm getting my setup here. So I did my math. So here was the ratios from the instructions on this pectin thing. So it was for every pint, one and a third cup of fruit, three teaspoons of pectin, 
and one and two thirds cup of sugar and I back mathed it into six cups of fruit which will be about four and a half pints. So here is going to be my strawberry pot. This big guy here is holding my mason jars and this is actually the basket for my Instapot. It has little silicone feet and it works perfect for this. And I'm just able to get enough water up here without bringing up my huge canning thing from the basement. I just have three jars in here. That's all that's going to fit. And these are the regular mouth ones. I don't like these, but this is all I have the seals for. So it looks like I can only do three at a time, which is not the end of the world. So I have my fourth one right there. And then whatever's left, I'll just put in a wide mouth and this will go in the fridge and we'll eat this first. So then I have my seals, my rings, my little, I don't know what you call these, scissory things. This guy I use basically for the magnet to get these out of the water. And then my retrieval thingamajig. And this is to open and close at the end. I don't usually use that too, too often. I'm just waiting for the water to boil before I get started. Okay, so I have my strawberries, the pectin slowly, and bring to a roiling boil till you can't be stirred down with a spoon over high heat. Then we add all of the sugar, stir to dissolve, return mixture to a full rolling boil for another minute. Stirring constantly, remove from heat, skim foam, and then pack into our jars. Okay, so let me get my fruit. So this is the, still the six cups of pureed strawberry. Looks so pretty. Okay, so let me get this heating up here. So for the pectin, I need 13 and a half teaspoons, which is a quarter cup, and then one and a half teaspoons, and a quarter cup is four tablespoons. So, and it says to put this in gradually. I'm gonna take a wild guess that it could clump. One. Let's do two, and then mix. Two, let's do two more. Two, and then what did I say? One and a half teaspoons. I'll go ahead and put that in now. It talks about adding butter, but it doesn't say how much. So I'm just gonna leave that out and see what happens. I feel like in years past when I've added butter, it's just been like, like a, like a pat of butter or something. It's not a lot. I think it has something to do with the foam, if I remember correctly. And honestly, by the time you get this done, your water is boiling. It takes forever for that water to get up to temp. Okay, I think one more kettle and that will be full. I already have my sugar measured out, so now I'm just waiting for this guy to boil, start boiling for a minute, is that right? Till you can't, I'm gonna have to write this recipe off this little label, this is kind of annoying. Combine the fruit, lemon juice, which I'm not using, gradually add the pectin, add butter if using, bring to a full rolling boil that cannot be stirred down over high heat, stirring constantly. Okay, so I'm gonna say that's boiling, see how it's boiling? And I'm stirring and it's not going away. So I think that's what they were talking about, but that's the side. And I pre-measured my seven and a half cups of a sugar. That's insane, I know. Oh boy, okay. Let's mix this in. Hopefully I don't get burned. And then it says once all the sugar's dissolved to let it go for another minute. And my kettle is already hot over there. I'm gonna cover those um, when this is done, I'm gonna pull those jars out and I just have boiling water on hand to cover that with like an inch of water. Okay, so feel the sugar. You can still feel it gritty on the bottom. And I have my phone here ready to go. As soon as it starts going, I'm gonna hit a minute. So when we were little, my mom used to make strawberry jelly all the time, but she made freezer strawberry jelly. So I think you do the same process, but instead of canning it, you just put it in whatever containers you want and put it in the freezer. I believe that's what my mom did. And my mom didn't blend hers. I don't know how she got her so thin or so mashed. I think she just used probably like a potato masher, probably cut them really thin, but I like this method. It's faster and then you get kind of a smoother jelly, I guess is really what this is. You could strain out the seeds too if you want, but they don't really bother me. If I was making raspberry, I probably would get those seeds out. 
Okay, I think we're back at the rapid boil here. And I will say, just be really careful. This is very hot. So I'm gonna set my timer now for a minute and hopefully do not get splashed. If I do, I'm just gonna pull it off the heat. Stirring constantly. Okay, so that's a minute. I cut the heat and I'm just gonna push this off to the side for a second. And let's get our jars ready. Okay, I forgot I also need a funnel and my little ladle here. So let's see. I'm going to get these out of here first. And it's full of water, so you wanna be careful. those out and then I'm just gonna go ahead and dunk my funnel really quick I forgot about that just to make sure take that out for a sec and then um, I don't usually sterilize these things they're fine Rosalie does not like this process I'm just gonna take my lids and just go plunk them in here they should be ready in a second actually I didn't need that fourth one let me take that one out. I just need three right now. Okay, Shio. Okay, Alad, I brought you over here. We'll see if this works better. So I'm gonna push it over as far as I can. Bring this over as far as I can. And just fill these guys up. I actually don't have too much foam on here to skim off, so I'm just going for it. And then for headspace, I like to go by where the funnel starts touching it, and that's usually just enough. I'll clean up if I miss any on the sides here. I'm really focusing on not getting any on the lip where the seal is going to go. That's where I do not want it to get dirty. just going in the fridge so I'll keep my funnel in there so it doesn't get too dirty I think I did get some on the lip here so what I'm gonna do is just get a paper towel some white vinegar and just wipe them off so like I said just some distilled vinegar on a paper towel here just to make sure there's nothing getting in the way of the seal hitting glass you don't want anything in between and then I might as well wipe these guys off Okay, so now I'm gonna get my lids here. I got my order of operations mixed up, but that's okay. So this little tool is handy. It's uh, intended to like scrape and get air bubbles around the jar, and then this side's a magnet to pick up the lids, which makes this part really easy. put my lids on and the tip I got from somebody else is you want these tightened with just your thumb and one finger so two finger tightened which is like really hard to do you can't really get it tight with two fingers so like you don't want it super duper tight you can do that afterwards so just two finger tight and I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit now. I have the kettle of boiling water. We're going to put them in here. I think I can do that. No, I'm going to use my little mommy things. I don't need to get burned. And these are going to process for about 10 minutes.
I'm definitely gonna need some more water, so let me grab that kettle. And like I said, 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. I'm gonna take these out carefully. Put them over here. And I'm hoping to hear that pop. Oh, you can't see them. Here, let me put them here. Oh, you can't see them over there either. There you go, now you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just taking these out, putting them over here, and in theory, as they cool down a little bit, the seal will pop down and you can hear it makes a pop. Okay, so very carefully pouring the water up. I just heard one, I don't know if you heard it. And I just got jelly on the seal, that's okay. <laughs> We're gonna fill him up all the way and hope, if I did this right in math, it should just fill up that other mason jar halfway, the one I'm putting in the fridge. Oop, I overfilled that. Oop, you hear that pop? A good noise. So I have this little ladle, I overfilled mine. I'm just gonna stick this in the hot water for a sec. And just take a little bit of this jelly out. I just went a little too crazy. There we go. I can finish this off while the other guy's sealing. So I still have my vinegar cloth here. Let's bring this guy over, he's hot, be careful. And I'm just gonna wipe him with the vinegar paper towel, make sure that seal is nice and clean. And then get my lid. Put him on top. And then I'm going to use the thing and use the two finger seal. And I'm gonna put him in the water, turn the water back up, and process him for 10 minutes. And actually, now that I have less things in here, let me get more water. My measurements were actually a little bit off because I got an entire mason jar full. I thought this was gonna be a half but that's okay. So this is the one that's going in the fridge. So for this guy right here, I'm just gonna let him cool on the counter with the other ones and then he just gets a plastic lid and he goes in the fridge when he's cool. Now I just have to bring this back up to the bubble 10 more minutes for this guy. So next day, here's the refrigerator one and I did it again. I made strawberry goo. It tastes really good but it's goo, it's not jelly, but is what it is. If anybody knows what I'm doing wrong, please tell me below. If not, I'll just keep making goo each year.